Merrimack TV is committed to our community. From gavel to gavel coverage of town and school board meetings to updates on town services and projects, we aim to keep you connected. Uh, good morning, I'm Kyle Fox, Public Works Director for the Town of Merrimack. Hi, I'm Diane Trippett. I'm the Town Clerk Tax Collector for the Town of Merrimack. I'm Captain Matt Tarleton with the Merrimack New Hampshire Police Department. And keep the public informed of every motion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. And many moments, so you can be confident that we're here for you. Thanks for watching. Stay connected. Follow Merrimack TV on Facebook. I was having FOMO. <laughs>
Thank you. So, everyone can see this, right? Yes. Awesome. Yeah, perfect. So, hello, I'm Joy Morris, as you already know, and thank you for giving me this opportunity. This is a proposal asking for your approval to build a gaga ball pit at Wasserman Park, this one at the waterfront. Great. But before I get into that, there's a couple of things about me. I'm 17 years old, and I'm one of the first five members of GT15, which is Girls Trip 15. Yay. Um, yay. <laughs> yay. Yeah. All right, I'll mute myself, Matt. Sorry. <laughs> Keep going. I was the troop's first senior patrol leader, and I achieved Life Scout rank on October 13th of this year. I'm now attempting to achieve Eagle Scout rank, and the most prominent requirement of achieving Eagle Scout rank is to organize and complete a service project that will benefit the community for many years. And so here are a few pictures of myself and my troop doing things. Um, this one over here. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun. Nice. So what is my project? My project is to build a Gaga ball pit at Wasserman Park Waterfront. The size is a 25 foot diameter by 33 inches height. And this is a rough sketch of my design for the Gaga pit. This is a, a cutout entrance so people can step into the pit. There are plastic uh. covers to round out the edges. The main sections are made of two by 10 by 12 boards. There are eight corner brackets. There are two by four boards on each section to keep the boards from warping and I already told you the dimensions so to the left is a Google Maps aerial view of the Gaga ball pit site I put an octagon where the pit should be and to the right is a ground level views of the site with uh, placeholders of the long end so it'll be an octagon here okay. nice. I, can't, I can't do it with my mouse so what will the pit be made of and how much will it cost? My budget is $1,850 for the wooden boards, eight metal corner brackets, eight plastic covers, the surface material, which will be sand, and any extra resources that has not come to my attention yet. And how will I raise the money? So I will have one or more storefront comic book sales selling comics that I drew myself. See these ah, two. Oh, wow. Very cool. <laughs> So for sales below five dollars, there'll be two black and white comics. This is one of them. And for sales above five dollars, I'll have a full comic book about eight half pages or so in color like this one. I will also have a GoFundMe to sell them virtually. Cool. Very interesting. Good. Very interesting. And so for my timeline, I should be able to get full approval by late January. And then I should be able to start and finish my fundraising in February. After that, I will need to start construction, which is primarily weather dependent. Uh, yep. So it should be by late March or once the ground is thawed enough to build. And then completion and reflection period at the end of March or start of April, depending on the weather. Nice. So now you know who I am, what I want to do, how I want to do it, how much it will cost, how I'll obtain the money, steps I need to take, and when I want to do the project. So now I'm asking for your approval. Thank you. Thank you. Nice presentation. What year are you yeah. in? <laughs> what was that? Okay. Do we have a question, somebody? No, I said nice job. Yeah. Joy, what year are you in high school, if I might ask? I'm a senior. Congratulations. Okay. And in a nutshell, in a couple of sentences, can you tell us what Gaga Ball is so people oh. might know? Oh, thank you, Laura. <laughs> yes. I wrote so, it out just in case I got that question. Is. I know. I wrote it out just in case I had that question. So, Gaga Ball is a dodgeball-like sport. It's played in a walled pit, like the one okay. you saw in the presentation. Uh, the ball remains on the ground for much of the game. Uh, and to get someone out, you need to hit them below, like at the knee or below with the ball. Okay. And you have to hit it with an open palm. So okay. some people hit it with their fist and then it flies out of the pit and they're out. So yeah. yeah. Is it similar to like a kickball, like a regular kind of ball? Yeah. That sound? Really anything will do. I, I played with friends okay. with a beach ball once. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> I wouldn't fun. use a okay. golf ball though. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. Any other questions or comments? No, I think it's great that you're in a troop. How long have you been in the troop 15? 
uh, when did it start? I think it was February 2018, but I could be wrong, because... Okay, yeah, well, good for you, that's, that's a great start. <laughs> so, Laura, this is Tracy, I have a question. Yeah. Sure. So, Joy, this is this is a great setup, and um, I just learned what Gaga Ball was about maybe, I don't know, six or eight months ago, and then completely forgot. So thank you again for explaining that to us. Um, I do want to go out and see somebody play it and see whether or not I'm even qualified. But um, my question to you is this. Is this um, the octagon that you're creating? Is it going to have uh, pieces of wood that are going to be going down into the ground? Um, like having, um, I, I'm trying, Rick, help me out. Somebody help me out. Um, is it going to be portable? Or are you going to be able to move it? Or is it something that is going to be a stationary? Good question. It'll be stationary. And how will it be anchored into the ground? It's very, very it's heavy. Very heavy. <laughs> okay. Well, it won't my, be reason for, my reason for asking was because you know, you're talking about a timeline that puts construction when the ground was still frozen. And so I wasn't sure how that worked out. But Oh, that's because I the ground's in a bit of a slant, so I need to build up a little bit of the sand first. And I can't do that until the the, the ground's thawed. Okay. It looks Tracy, great. Thank you. To your question, Tracy, we have one of these already at Wasserman by the playground. Right. We, it was another scout project two years uh -huh. ago, I think. And yeah, it's it ain't going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I, I'm assuming, Joy, you're working with Matt on location, 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 because it's a the waterfront is a hot and happening place, especially hopefully in 2021 with the revamping of the waterfront. It oh, yeah. kind of looked like in the second picture that the pit was near the road that loops around there. So I'm sure you're working with Matt. So that, I think that's a good thing. I think it's going to be a great draw down there. Um, it's going to be a very busy place down there. <laughs> Looking at the picture, it looks like the... Um... It, it looks like there's a fe there's a fenced in area that's relatively close to where the waterfront is back a little bit from the beach. And it looked like the Gaga ball pit was actually going to be back by that and not near the loop. Was it, did I misread that? I can get the picture. Thank you. I think that might help. Yeah. It's kind of, it's, it's, it's hard to see. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's on the other side of that fenced in area, which is street hockey. Um, it okay. is kind of near that park road, but again, that park road is not open to the general public. That's for maintenance vehicles and that kind of thing. So in oh, the, I see. Yeah, that's so a best the, the, the screen In the left side of the picture, the, the, that park road kind of comes up between the fence on the left and that tree that's on the far left is where that road loops around. Okay. So it'll be near that, but again, that's only a camp vehicle that would be back there anyway, not the general public. Right. Super. Thank you, Matt. All important, but it was good. Thank you. Thank you for repost posting that picture. It's going to be a great. <laughs> Rick has a question. Thanks, Joy. My question is, um, is it going to be similar in um, design and looks as the existing one? And I, I think we would ideally have some consistency there, but have you guys talked about that? It will be very similar, yes. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. Is the next step, Matt and Joy, to go to the town council if we approve when we when we approve this this evening? Yes, it is. But it looks like Shannon has a question. Yeah, I, have, I had two. Um, first, it's more for a question for Matt. Um, how often is the Gaga Ball Pit used in its current location? Is it heavily used? And does it look? And the second question is: by having two within the same park, when we have other parks, is it? Um, targeted just for a different age group or so uh, I, I'm just trying to understand the, the having two Gaga ball pits in the same park when we um, that'd be the only two in the in the town would I be right about that too it camp it when camps in session which we obviously weren't this summer but it's heavily used um, mm -hmm. and there's always kind of a line to use it okay um, but again it's a different area of the park which is why we you know wanted to provide an additional amenity but being also down by the waterfront will kind of i think we'll get a lot of general public use for it like on the weekends and things when camp's not in session that we wouldn't necessarily get at the other pit that's up near the function hall and was there consideration for putting it in other parks maybe uh, twin bridges 
Um, and I'm, I'm trying to think of, you know, I think yeah, Watson, twin I, twin bridge is tough on space to, okay. to fit it right now. Um, and then Watson, because we have the volleyball court. Yeah, and Watson would be a possibility um, in the future. Watson would be a good choice too. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, so I guess the thing is based on use like normal usage. I think this summer was way of putting it when it comes to Watson Park. But with the adjustments that have been made, I'm sure it's going to be very different next year. Um, would you? What about Weston, Shannon? What do you think of Weston would be an option? That that was really kind of the question. What what parks are getting used heavily, and that maybe don't have act, as many activities? One and two, uh, would you find that this would get as much use at Wasserman as it would at a park that doesn't have one at all? Um, huh. Wasserman and Twinbridge are the two busiest parks. Um, the, yeah. There's a small playground at at Veterans Park that doesn't get a whole lot of use at all. Um, Watson wouldn't be a bad idea, um, but, but it's would, also you know, something. But I don't know that it would get as much use as as Wasserman. But wouldn't that, to Shannon's point, wouldn't that be a, a good thing to bring people to other parks that aren't being utilized as much as Wasserman and Twin Bridges to spread people out a little bit more, and that way it's not so highly trafficked. It, that's well, a good thought, Shannon. Of course, Watson Park was jam full all summer long this year. You couldn't well, get there if you tried, you know. Yeah, I wouldn't uh, pick Watson personally, but maybe like Weston, which is smaller and um, West, Weston, Weston park. park isn't flat enough. Um, there's not a big enough flat yeah, area. Plus, it's area. a sledding hill. And there's not um, enough park. And there's not enough parking. Parking. And not enough parking there. So I don't think it would get a lot of use there either. Just as an aside, I have more Life Scouts coming too. They'll be looking for projects. Okay, there we go. Get right. other parks that want, want one. That. Right? <laughs> I'll send them your way. Oh, hi. Oh, hi there, Boy Scout. <laughs> <laughs> We're learning a lot about Gaga Ball. It seems like there's a trend. So that's why I'm saying, you know, do we want to spread it out if it seems to be popping up all over the place? But if you're going to get the usage between the beach users, the, the local residents, and, and then the, the camp programs, then this makes total sense. But yeah. uh, that's something, obviously, uh, thank you yeah, for, the, uh, and, for consideration, but it may be something we'll definitely want more of. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Any other thoughts or questions? All right. Nice job. Do we nice. do I have a motion to approve? Since I'm off mute, I'd be glad to make a motion to recommend uh, Joy Morris's Gaga Ball Pit <laughs> at Wasserman Park um, at the, uh, near, near the waterfront. Thank you, Shannon. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Rick. And all those in favor, aye. 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 I think it's all around. Yep, it is. And what's the count tonight? Do we have seven? Seven. Yep. Seven. Seven. Great. Thank you. And, and Joy and I have already kind of talked on email, and she's tentatively, what did we say, January 11th, was it? Or whatever the January meeting is for the council. Um, right. So she's already... Um, scheduled on the agenda for them. Um, Joy, the only thing I might throw out, throw as a suggestion to add to your presentation would be find a short video clip of people playing Gaga Ball. Oh, that's a Because um, there might be council members that that don't know what it is either, and and then you can kind of short just a quick clip of it actually being played. Um, Good idea. Yeah. So that might be just a just a suggestion. Yeah, I might do that. Um, but yeah. Well, congratulations, Joy, um, this committee has approved your project and onward and forward. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Thanks for joining us this evening. Nice presentation. Thank you very much. It was a great presentation. Thank you. Thanks right. for your time. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for joining us. Have sure. a nice holiday. Merry Christmas, everyone. Yep. yep. Merry Christmas. Michelle, did you get all the notes for that stuff? I did. Good. I did. You're so confident. I love it. All right. Thank you. Moving on. Old business, Matt. All right. Park, Park Beach update. All okay. right. So we finally got our permits from the state to do the Wasserman Park Beach project. Um, <laughs> it took forever. Um, 
obviously the ground's kind of frozen, kind of hard to do that project now. And we have to do the dredging portion first. Um, and so that's not going to happen before uh, the lake freezes. So um, we're on task for spring at this point. Um, yep. And so it'll go out to bid this winter at some point, uh, January, February, March timeframe, somewhere in there um, with the idea to start it, you know, as soon as we get spring um and availability of the contractor and all that but um hopefully you know with the budget this year one of our capital projects was also for for next fiscal year was replacing the docks which are now 29 years old and falling apart um and so the kind of hope that we'll get all of it done within three or four month time span you know early July, maybe they'll even let me order the docks early so we can get them in for like the beginning of July, you know. Um, so yeah, we'll have a really nice new beach and a new Gaga ball pit. And, uh, and we obviously had that other scout project that did the public restrooms or public changing rooms and restrooms that got <coughs> finished. So um, yeah, waterfront's going to look up and, and if, if all goes well, the other thing we're looking at down there is we're hoping to be able to start renting out kind of canoes and kayaks um, okay. that we own to the public because I'm trying to get one of the th one of the few funding increases I've asked for this year is um, weekend lifeguards because we are expecting more usage of the beach this coming year and on the weekends um, and we haven't had guards down there in at least ten years so yeah. Yeah. if they approve that then we'll also be able to do um, we'll be able to rent out the canoes and kayaks that, that, that the town owns that only gets used by the camp. So that'll be nice. So that's it under old business for me. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. And um, Christine, any updates from the dog park right, or things that are happening? Um, I'm sorry, I, I'm out of the loop with uh, the dog park right yeah. now because yeah. of the <laughs> thing. Yeah. Um, How's it going? Oh, it's going one day at a time. Unfortunately, I'm on my cell phone, so I don't have the agenda up. So, Matt, you'll have to fill in, or Laura, you can fill in for that, yeah. or, or Tracy, if you got it right there. Um, so, I, I, you did have a blurb in there, if I recall. But Yeah, it just said our fund balance is $1,762.59, and that's after paying um, for the, the, the mulch from the, the last order there. Right. I mean, I did... The, the mulch did get spread, which is great. The last snowstorm, I did drive by, and looks like it got um, the entryways and on both sides in the little corral there had been shoveled, so that's a good thing. We did have a shovel left out there, so I think um, somebody's gone over. Maybe your guy went over there, or we had some good it, yeah. nice patrons that helped out, so that's a good thing. Um we got another snowstorm coming, so hopefully that will get shoveled out tomorrow. Um, we definitely don't want people pushing the gates because they will damage the gates. Correct. Um, that's it. I, I haven't been on the in them in a while. Sorry. <laughs> Broken leg yeah, down I, the hill, not good. <laughs> no, no, I know. It seems like I can't believe a month's gone by already. Tracy, okay. you over there? Yeah, I was just going to say, um, I have been over there, uh, but I wanted to start out by saying thank you again to Shannon. Uh, she donated a huge bag of, um, uh, well, we'll just say uh, puppy bags. Nice. And, uh, so we have those We have those in storage. Uh, I checked all the different places, and they're all pretty full, so I'll keep tabs on that. I am going to go over there tomorrow, hopefully after the storm is out. But to reemphasize what you said, if anybody watching this is planning on going to the dog park, please, please, please don't use the gates as your shovel. Um, and if there's any issues or anything, to please post something out on our Facebook page, which is Friends of the Merrimack Dog Park. And somebody will respond or come out there and uh, see what needs to be done. And we'll kind of go from there, but we're looking at 10 to 18 inches. So it should be, it should be a lot of fun for the pups for a nice fluffy. <laughs> exactly. Well, thank you very much, Charles. Appreciate it. We call them All right, Matt, director's report. Um, you know, holiday happening. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, Shannon. Do you have uh, a question first? Go ahead. Yeah. Do we uh, still have salt, the uh, pet safe salt? Because I think if you were looking for some, I gave you some last year, but 
I don't know if it's been used up yet. Oh, good question. Tracy, you were in the shed. Did you happen to notice if we had some still left or not? Well, I got to tell you, when I was in the shed last time, it was after I went to Shannon's house and picked up the, the uh, puppy bags, and it was <laughs> rather dark out there, and uh, I heard things in the background. It wasn't really going to stick around and wait to hear what was. Um, but I will go <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I've got remodeling going on in the background, and apparently somebody forgot I was at a meeting. Um, <laughs> anyway, I will check tomorrow for uh, Pet Save Salt. Great. Excellent. Thank you. Good question, Shannon. Thanks for being involved with that. Absolutely. We'll just put that on the wish list. I'm sure we'll need more. So if anybody has any good lines for sale on <laughs> Pet Save Salt, they want to donate some, that'd be wonderful. Drop them off at Matt's desk. He'll appreciate it. <laughs> good, good Except point. the town hall's been closed for tomorrow, so we're not here tomorrow. <laughs> Put them under the, under the porch. Okay. There you go. <laughs> anyway, um, so we had a really busy week last week. Um, we On Sunday, we held our modified, the start of our modified holiday happenings event. Um, which started with Santa's tour of town, the Merrimack Fire Department. Um, it went okay. It, um, you know, the, the, the whole concern was obviously we didn't want 600 people showing up at the tree lighting like we normally get. And so, you know, the fire department drove Santa and Mrs. Claus to basically all sides of town and kind of pulled into, you know, school parking lots and some of the bigger businesses parking lots and Santa and Mrs. Claus would talk and wave to the crowd for a few minutes and then they'd move on. Some locations we'd have five or six families, some locations like the high school, I think we only had one or two. So it was kind of, eh, you know, it was okay. Um, it, um, but we do want to thank the fire department for helping. It was at least we were able to do something. We did also hold our abbreviated tree lighting um, afterwards, which lasted all of about 10 minutes as we expected. Um, it was, you know, Santa and Mrs. Claus came down we had a, you know, with the snowstorm we had on Saturday, you know, it was kind of solid ice down in the park. Um, and the, um, the town hall snowblower broke Saturday. <laughs> and so I was Saturday or Sunday morning, I was out there digging by hand, digging the bandstand out, you know, all the steps and stuff just to, but I had to kind of like walk both Santa and Mrs. Claus just so they didn't slip and fall getting to the bandstand because we didn't have a, it wasn't plowed, you know. Um, and there were just, there wasn't a way to do that, but, um, so they came in, they did their, you know, their countdown. We turned on the lights, Broadway bound did a socially distanced dance. It was, I think eight of them, um, eight members of that group that did a quick dance. Miss Merrimack and Miss Hookset joined us and kind of welcomed the crowd, which was probably about 40 people, which was mostly the families of those that were there. Um, and so it was okay, you know, it, uh, we took pictures, we posted them, you know, we, um, we had a few people that um, didn't hear about, said they didn't hear about our, um, our events on Sunday. They, uh, and there was, I guess there was some grumbling on the, the forum about it, um, which is kind of funny because one, we did more advertising for this year than we did for other years. Um, I was on Merrimack TV and, and, and just social media posts and things. Um, and we actually had really great turnout with some of our, the other events that we did that we advertised at the same time. So I don't, I don't know how they missed, saw, heard one, but not the other, but it is what it is. Hopefully next year, well, things will be kind of back to normal and we'll be, we will, uh, kind of have a normal year of festivities. Um, our second event last week was our annual Santa Calling program. We had nine town employees volunteer their time to play Mr. Uh, Santa and Mrs. Claus. Um, aside from James and myself, we had representatives from uh, the police department, the library, finance, and welfare, um, helping make phone calls this year. We called uh, 63 kids, um, which was good. We did, which is up by about 10 from last year. Um, so that was good. And again, Thanks. we thank those departments for for helping us with that, it's always a challenge to get all the calls in and get a hold of people before they go to bed, or suddenly they're not home, or you know, um, it's it's kind of a hectic two days of phone calls at, in the evening. Um, last Saturday, we held our drive-through holiday food drive. Um, 
the we ended up with about 70 families come through and donate food we actually filled my car twice um so we oh, we filled it up in about about an hour in a little after and we had about 45 minutes left in the event um and uh it's of course started to rain so we kind of quickly threw the first everything we had collected at the point went got dumped into my car um just to keep it dry um and uh and then people still kept coming along but we had um we worked with macaroni kid who had a goodie bags to give away we had state farm um agent uh from merrimack and his uh, mascot the nay bear uh, we also had melvin the lion from the lions club um uh-huh. and then of course santa and mrs claus and then we gave out hot chocolate at, in this drive through so it was a nice little event again about yeah. 70 families came through um uh-huh. so basically a carload full of food went to uh saint james newman church food pantry and then the other another carload full went over to um St. John Newman's food pantry. So that all went out on Monday and they were very appreciative of, of all of that. So that was nice. And hopefully we'll make that kind of an annual event going forward, but it was certainly a busy week. Um, on top of that, we released our list for the Southern New Hampshire Festival of Lights. Um, this was a, a partnership with eight other communities in Southern New Hampshire um, who were all advertising this program. But between the nine towns, we had 144 homes sign up to be on the list um, we put out the list on thursday um, we had 23 homes in merrimack um, and when you go to if you um, if you missed our facebook post you can actually go you can obviously go back and look at it um, you, there's two ways to connect you can either download the page and go to uh, scan a qr code and for each town that has a qr code and it'll it'll actually take you in order um, through the tour, like so, you're going from north to south through the town. Merrimack actually has two lists, so it's kind of the first, I think, 12 houses, and then 11 on the second list, just to to, to space it out, because um, it takes a while. It took me two and a half hours, I think, to just to drive the, through all the homes in Merrimack. Um, but obviously, there's eight other communities that I personally haven't driven yet. Um, but you can also go to our website and download the list there. You can also click on the link to download it that way. Um, but the you know homes on the list are expected to keep their lights shining up through December 27th. And then again, just a free, fun thing to do um, for the holidays. Um, yeah, great idea. I'm glad so, it's working. Um, now I will just comment for anybody that's listening at home is only houses that signed up to be on the list were included on the list. Um, there's There are a few notable homes missing in town that are over the top and done and but again we only we, we didn't manually add anybody that didn't ask to be added so okay. um so that was deliberate so um but again nice nice um holiday event but again it was um kind of five days of events last week yeah yeah you've been busy <laughs> um moving on to winter uh this morning we kicked off a new program um geared towards outreach for kind of Merrimack seniors. Um, we start, we had a, we scheduled a virtual coffee series, um, which started this morning. Uh, we missed you on the call, Maureen. Um, <laughs> but it's a, it's a free program that we're going to do kind of every week, every two weeks for the next uh, couple of months. Um, this morning we had 16 people join us on the call and we kind of talked about all things parks and rec um you know what we've been up to what's coming up in the next couple of months we spent a lot of time talking about merrimack's 275th anniversary which i'll get to in a minute um but we did some brainstorming about kind of new senior programs that we're going to try and offer um again the, the o'leary center is going to be closed until who knows when for you april know, april hopefully um, yeah and, uh, so just trying to help supplement some things, some free, you know, we were talking about things like um, at home chair yoga and, you know, done virtually and maybe Merrimack trivia and, you know, who knows, yeah, um, yeah. speakers and, you know, some of those kinds of things. But um, coming up in, so I was tonight, today, um, and then coming up in future weeks, we've got uh, Kyle Fox from Public Works talking about all things public works, probably the his bond project with the wastewater treatment plant, I'm guessing. Um, uh-huh. Pat Murphy from Welfare the, will be after that. Um, mm-hmm. Max, um, and I can't think of his last name, the, the adult services librarian will be then. Then we'll okay. have Andy Van, um, 
Bill Vanderside from the library, and, I mean, from the police department, and then uh, John Manuelli from the fire department. So every two weeks, we've got a speaker talking about kind of respective departments, just kind of a way to connect okay. people with what's going on in town from a town perspective. Um, but again, for, for me, it was a way to also kind of pick some of their brains a little bit about what else they might like to see. Um, I know some of the seniors are doing um, virtual bingo right now and some of them are doing a walking group, but we've talked about yeah. some other possibilities as well. So um, more coming on that. Um, we did get permission to run December school vacation week in two weeks. Um, so we'll be running a program here at Wasserman Monday through Thursday of vacation week. Um, small program um, on purpose. Um, we, um, we're, we can take a maximum of 16 kids, but right now we're only averaging about eight a day and that's okay too. Um, obviously kind of COVID protocols are in place, you know, temperature screenings and questions and, and masks indoors and, but a mix of indoors and outdoor time, sports games, arts and crafts, movies, they get hot lunch every day. Um, it's forty dollars for the day for a for a for a, to cover from eight a.m. till five thirty p.m. Um, so nice child care, you know, especially if they've been home doing remote learning for a couple of weeks, might be a way for parents to get a break. I know my own kids are coming to the program, so um, <laughs> you know we could use it too. And they get, and they get a lunch. That's and they nice. get lunch with that, so um, pretty good deal. Um, so we do have some spaces left. If people are interested, they can either register online or obviously call the office. Um, and so that is, um, an option. Um, we are working with public works to get the ice skating rink at Watson park set up. Um, I believe they've started building it. And now that we're finally getting cold, they can start freezing the ice. It takes usually a couple of weeks to get the ice frozen and frozen enough and thick enough that people don't break through. You know, right. one of the challenges we have is that people tend to go on it when it's not quite ready, they break through, and now you got to wait for that layer where they stepped and broke through to refreeze. Okay. Um, our over-under is usually somewhere around the last week of December, first week of January. Um, hopefully, we'll do better than last year with um, cold weather. I think last year we had maybe three weeks out of the whole season, yeah. uh, and three weeks might have been pushing it because it just didn't stay cold. Um but hopefully that will be coming soon, um, especially with the, the cold weather we've had this week. Um, the, uh, so that's the rink. Whenever we do have it, figure out what our estimated opening date is. We are going to do like a skate with a date Yay. again with kind of music and hot chocolate and, of course, social distancing and all that good stuff. But um, we, we're expecting to do that again. We may even try to do something like – Tuesday night, date night or something at the rink. I'm not sure yet, but um, we have lights down there now and and because um, we put them in for the um, beach volleyball. So um, oh, good. Good. it will be a lighted area this year. And uh, so hopefully we'll get a lot of use and that'll be nice. Um, the, uh, the last one I'll mention just to kind of future programs we're working on. Um, and again, benefit of anybody watching at home, we are working with a number of communities, again, in, in Southern New Hampshire on virtual uh, gaming leagues, esports. Um, so these are um, virtual programs that people can do from the benefit of their own home computers or their home video game systems. Um, so there's six different sports. It's Madden football, FIFA soccer, Fortnite, Super Smash Brothers, NBA sports, Rocket Sports, um, and, and so it's a tournament style. It's, you know, $20 for a six week league. Um, okay. And then and, and the uh, league organizer, GG Leagues is, you know, will have prizes for the winning, but they're essentially competing against other rec departments in the area. Um, okay. But of course there are safety measures in place. So kids can't like talk to strangers um, on there. So, um, so it's all, it looks good. We've already gotten you know, a handful of people signed up, which will be, which is nice. Mm -hmm. um, and again, $20 for a six weeks program is, is pretty nice. Um, yeah. The, uh, so that's, that, that information is up on our, on our website as well. Um, so then we'll move on to Merrimax 275th. As I mentioned, I think a couple of months ago, the town has created a committee of, of which I am in charge of um, to figure <laughs> out how we're going to celebrate um, the 275th anniversary um, 
the official anniversary is April 2nd. Um, and the idea at this point is, um, so there's a, there's a committee that's been formed that's kind of good cross section of historic districts, heritage commission, some at large members from the community. Um, I think Rotary's gonna now get involved as well. Um, the school, um, so a little bit of everybody. We've had three virtual meetings at this point and we're kind of meeting monthly, but now the groups are kind of working in small groups on specific tasks. The idea is going to be kind of monthly events um, starting in April. As I said, the official anniversary is April 2nd, but that happens to be Good Friday and Easter weekend. So we're obviously going to skip that. But so we're probably looking at the second weekend of each month um, for activities. You know, April and May are going to probably be Heritage Commission and Historic Districts talking about Merrick's, Merrimack's histories. They're going to think looking at things like um, interviewing um, families that have been around for generations and kind of what did Merrimack look like back then. We're looking at kind of scavenger hunt historical tours, um, self-guided tours of, of various locations, um, kind of small group activities to start. You know, obviously we can't do major festivals right now just because we can't. Um, and so um, the hope is that by the time we get into June, July, August, that we'll be able to do more festival type things. Um, one of the things we're hoping to do is for August, um, we're looking at the weekend of August 21st and 2nd of kind of a weekend, old home days, family, end of summer festival, probably will include to include Good. fireworks, uh, music. Uh, we might do like a civil war reenactment, um, just kind of, family yeah, perfect. gathering celebrate that we can actually hold such a gathering by that time hopefully um again a lot of things are up in the air depending on timeline of um widespread distri distribution of the, the vaccine but uh that's kind of the hope at this point um for those of you who are on facebook there is a facebook page that has now been created called merrimack 275th um there is a link to it from the town website, merrimacknh.gov. If you go right on the main page, right on the left-hand side, there's a blue box um, that says Merrimack 275th, which will take you to kind of the main event page. And as we start to develop the calendar of exactly what's going to happen, it'll have the links to all that information. Um, so we have a Facebook page and then the, as well as the, uh, the town page um, with the, with, where we're going to be posting all that information. Um, so lots, we're keeping busy, you know, it, you when are. they did this 25 years ago, they had done April to July and kind of ended things at 4th of July. And that was kind of our original thought initially, but where we can't really do any large gatherings, it's like, well, let's just keep going. And hopefully by the time we get into summer, we'll be able to do some more large scale things. So, um, you know, there's a number, you know, we're kind of looking again at the second weekend of each month with the exception of August where it's going to be the third weekend. Um, and uh, again, hopefully we'll have um, be able to do some of those big things, but there's a number of kind of holidays that we can kind of tie into potentially um, Armed Forces Day, Flag Day, um, right. Fourth of July, obviously kind of maybe doing something that entire week. Um, when we get into um, September, September 11th falls on Saturday this year, and it's the 20th anniversary. Um, so something with that as well. And then probably closing <laughs> things out in October with, um, with Columbus Day weekend. Um, so we're keeping busy. Um, so as we always do. So that's the anniversary plans that is, as it is at this point, um, and, and more to come on that. Um, Thank you. Lastly, in terms of department updates, it looks like I'm going to be presenting the Parks and Rec budget to the council on January 13th, which is a Wednesday. Um, those meetings at this point are still in person. Um, anybody's welcome to come, although, you know, you can certainly watch it on TV. You don't have to come. Um, as I said, my budget's largely okay. level funded with the exception of looking for um, weekend lifeguards um, at this point. So, um, I, the other, the only other update I have is that I have been given permission to start hiring and for summer, for summer staff. Um, so we've that's now been posted yeah. on the town website and our website. So in anticipation of running camp next summer, um, 
and so that process has now started. So if you know kids looking for jobs, um, send them my way. We'll probably start. I'm, I'm, I just reached out to my the staff we had planned to hire last summer to see who's going to come back. Um, but the idea is hopefully in January after the holidays, we'll, uh, we'll start interviewing anybody new applicants that come in and, and, uh, and we'll be go golden. And, right. and uh, hopefully on January 13th with the council, I'll get the final approval to run camp this summer. I am working, um, I sit on the board for New Hampshire Camp Directors Association um, and I'm part of a task force that's actually working with the HHS um, to help update the guidelines. Um, they've already made changes that are going to make it um, like they made changes to the child care regulations that like last year it was going to be you could only have 10 people in a group and for child care in the fall they changed it to 20. Now that in itself solves 90% of the problem I would have had at camp um, with, with um, being able to afford you know just it was we were going to lose money at that at that rate you know uh, we just couldn't run that small so if that change alone um assuming they apply it to camp which we expect they will will solve kind of 90 percent of the, the headaches we were going to have last summer so um we should be in good shape to go and we're expecting those changes to come in january too so hopefully camp registration will open in january excellent well here's to a good new year that's for sure oh yeah, right. yeah. Okay. any questions or comments for matt Okay, Maureen. Oh, hello. Nice to, see, nice to see you. Am I on? You are, you are on. You are on. <laughs> oh, I'm on. Hi. Um, Hi. <laughs> well, seniors, as you know, the senior, well, it's not the senior, the John O'Leary building is closed. Mm -hmm. uh, and the whole thing is we're hoping that in April mm -hmm. we may be open. And we've already, the John O'Leary committee that I went to Monday night, we ordered, uh, we've got two orders on those new air filters for COVID. Oh, nice. So those are going to be installed. So that's going to make it easier for the you know seniors to get back. Plus we're redoing the bathrooms. So in a good way of being closed, we're able to do other things that we couldn't do. You know, we'd have to close it to do the floors and the bathrooms. So it's a good thing. And in yeah. lieu of the uh, Christmas party, we, the group, a group of six, I guess, got together and sent out scratch tickets to everybody. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. I don't know who won. I don't, I didn't, <laughs> but anyways, but I didn't go on that coffee thing this morning because I was at the dentist. Okay. And I was like, oh, <laughs> All right. I'd rather have been with coffee with you guys, but found a cavity. Yeah. Yeah, I found a cavity I don't want a filling, so that's got to be taken care of. And I did go oh, yeah, walking with the seniors on Tuesday. Good. We went to the Good. mall, the outlets, and it was great. It was Good. a fun time. Everybody wore masks, and nobody was there at the mall at the outlets. I'm really surprised they're still alive over there. So, yeah. But yeah. Uh, other than that, no, we're hanging in. All the Good a lot of seniors. Uh, I don't know a lot of. Some have been passing, so by the time we get together, it's going to be a lot of new faces. So that's for yeah. sure. Yeah. There have been a lot of losses this month. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you, Maureen. And Abby, are you here? She's not. Yeah. No. Happy she's, holiday. She's probably tired of Facebooking things <laughs> with school. Yeah, probably. <laughs> okay. And Rick, good, good evening, Rick. Good evening. Thank you. Um, so we have registration currently open for our lacrosse program and softball's registration will open on January 1st of the new year. Um, our winter sports, including wrestling and basketball, are currently on hold due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And um, that's about it to report. Um, as always, I want to thank the Department of Public Works for keeping us going. And um, for anybody out yep. there looking for more info, they can find it at the, uh, at the website MerrimackYouthAssociation.com. Great. Thank you, Rick. Merry You're Christmas. Welcome. Happy holidays. Thank you. And Shannon, good evening. Thank you. So uh, for those who may be thinking of the first snow day, we are definitely going to be having school session remotely tomorrow. Uh, so, you know, 
Mm-hmm. I, I've, I've heard mixed reviews, don't get me wrong, um, even from our own governor, um, who owns a ski mountain, so I'm sure that's what he's also concerned about. So <laughs> we'll, we'll leave it there. But, uh, you know, then again, Memorial Day, we get calls from all the parents saying the kids are done with school and they want the summer. So hopefully this will be the way to get them the summer. <laughs> days. And Laura, you've been, you were a teacher long enough to know exactly what I'm talking about. Rick, you're <laughs> right now so um, so on that note uh so we are going to have school in session remote learning day um as our my or may or may not be aware we have been full remote since uh the week uh thanksgiving uh yeah. and we will be going back to a uh, hybrid after uh, martin luther king jr day uh, mm-hmm. that will give enough time for those who did travel for the holiday to come home and quarantine and get back to uh school uh, okay. So we have that because holiday travel is definitely causing some some uh, concerns. And we also had, well, we have staffing issues, obviously. You know, when schools around us were going full remote because for the same reason, that's really what our response was about. We had to go full remote because, um, you know, by law, we, we have to be able to uh, accommodate those who cannot uh, be in the office because the remote is part of the CARES Funding Acts and uh, we're being compliant. So. It did cause a circumstance, but we should be uh, back in uh, session after Martin Luther King Day. Um, when it comes to sports, uh, we are doing our winter sports um, fully. Uh, there are going to be strict regulations, uh, mask wearing during play uh, as well. Uh, for those um, that are realistic to do so, swimming would be tough. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, wrestling, I think, would also be tough for safety reasons. But... Um, they will be wearing them between matches and, you know, whenever they are not on the mat. So those kind of things. Uh, we're taking extreme precaution uh, to make sure that we are, you know, we're safeguarding our students as best as we can. Because, you know, although they are choosing to play sports, those that they interact with in the classroom are not necessarily. And we have to protect um, their interaction with those students as well. So um, we are in the best shape we can be for the circumstances we're in. Uh, and... Mm-hmm. Uh, and with that, I think we are ready for a little rest and relaxation, uh, which will be coming before you know it, because it's next week with our <laughs> break. So for, those, for those who are saying the kids need the break, well, they're getting one in a week for a week and a half. So you're That's almost funny. there. So <laughs> and, and for, those, for those families, um, we do we do wish uh, a very happy holiday season. And uh, for those already celebrating, because Hanukkah is upon us. Um, so I hope you're enjoying it as we speak. Uh, so with that, I think we are in good shape. And uh, if there's anything... Uh, you have for me let me know great thank you so much shannon happy holidays to you too take care we, we can get through all this we're getting we we're so close we so will. close we through a lot so we'll just keep cool. along Whew. yeah okay thank you um anybody from town council this evening matt or nope mm-hmm. all right <clears throat> any other um, any public people listening calling in doesn't look like it. Nobody at my All house. All right. Um, <laughs> nobody here. And our next meeting is scheduled for January 20th, 2021. Yep. Just have to change the date of the minutes, Michelle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just thought that's on. <laughs> 2021. Yay. All right. So. I will Merry Christmas, Christmas, Happy New, Happy Everything, Happy Holidays, yes, friends. Happy thank you for everything, being Happy here. Holidays. <laughs> I will let you take a motion to adjourn if, you, if you'd like thank to. Thank you, Shannon. <laughs> Everybody stay safe. Yes. yes. I, I second yes. Shannon's yes. motion yes. to adjourn. Thanks, Tracy. Yeah, thank you, Tracy. <laughs> stay on. Yeah. All those in favor of adjourning, aha, uh-huh, <laughs> 7 0, and it is. 7.57, not bad. Oh, Bingo. Right. Merry right. Christmas, Bingo happy down. holidays, happy yeah. Hanukkah, and everything happy else. Holidays, yes. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah. Oh, yeah. Happy holidays, guys. I'm drinking my wine. Merrimack TV is committed to our community. From gavel-to-gavel coverage of town and school board meetings to updates on town services and projects, we aim to keep you connected. Uh, Good morning, I'm Kyle Fox, Public Works Director for the Town of Merrimack. Hi, I'm Diane Trippett. I'm the Town Clerk Tax Collector for the Town of Merrimack. I'm Captain Matt Tarleton with the Merrimack New Hampshire Police Department. And keep the public informed of every motion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. And many moments 
so you can be confident that we're here for you. Thanks for watching. Stay connected. Follow Merrimack TV on Facebook.